Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And if you didn't see the short video that I posted on Sunday, this is the week where I celebrate the fact that we got to 15,000 subscribers on this channel and I'm doing a hidden giveaway in one of my videos. Will it be this video? I'm not gonna tell you if it's gonna be this video, but in that short, I didn't tell you what you could win. You could win this. This is a new knife from Real Steel Knives. This is the Sacra. It's uh, a axis lock style knife. And what's the steel on it? K110 steel, which is basically a, a Chinese D2 steel. But it's kind of unique in some ways. It's got, instead of two liner slabs, it's got a fold over liner. Not really integral, but sort of like that kind of concept. It's not a very big knife. It's got uh, micarta handle scales in blue. And uh, I'm liking it. Is it a perfect knife? No. But uh, it's the knife, the main knife that's going to be in the giveaway. There's going to be more than just this knife in the giveaway. Uh, there's going to be some other good stuff that you might want. But uh, it's quite nice. I really like the action on this thing. It's nice and smooth. It's not super big. Uh, and that's what's in there. Whichever video this week that I choose to randomly draw the winner from, the winner gets chosen if they are a subscriber to the channel. Uh, I far prefer if you're a public subscriber. And if you leave a comment, you gotta leave a comment. Those two things, and that's it. So I'm not trying to gain new subscribers this way. You know, I don't want subscribers that'll just subscribe to a giveaway video and then never watch another video. That's why I'm doing it this hidden format. You're probably gonna have to watch every video this week and leave comments. Hopefully that'll also trigger YouTube to share my videos more frequently. I'm trying to grow my channel with people that actually watch because right now less than 15% of the people that watch videos on my channel actually subscribe. And subscribers, subscriptions really do help. I'm trying to get in with a, another Canadian vendor for knives so that hopefully they'll give me a discount when I buy knives from them so that I can afford to get them so that I can show them to you. I can't afford just to buy knives all the time, especially not without discounts. And in Canada, knives cost more. It's just the way it is. Thankfully, they're starting to get closer, but they still cost way more in Canada. I still have to sell almost every knife that I review in order to recoup those funds. I'm not getting rich off this channel, but I do want to share my love for budget knives with the rest of the world, especially knife newbies come into you know, the hobby and they tend to start off with budget knives and uh, their hobby grows from there. And I'm targeting, I'm staying at that budget level so I can keep helping more and more people you know, sort of develop into this hobby. I've also got another side to my channel called Canadian Cutting Edge University where I do more educational videos like how to repair knives, how to do knife maintenance, all kinds of stuff like that. And you know, more details about the hobby itself. So hopefully you like Canadian Cutting Edge. And today we're taking a review of this, this knife. This is the CJRB Caldera. It comes two ways. It comes uh, with either this red accent here in G10 or a blue accent in G10. Those are the two ways this knife comes. If you're interested in this sort of bigger cleaver style, it's not really big, but a little bit bigger cleaver style knife, then stick around. We're gonna do the full review right now on the tabletop. I forgot to add one more tidbit of information. If this knife is not legal to own or carry where you live, uh, the blade is about 3.2 inches long, then uh, you'll get a different prize. And we'll talk about it between the two of us and we'll decide on something that you're gonna like to have uh, from you know what I have available to give away. So please don't uh, feel like you're left out if you can't really get this knife. And by the way, it's open to anybody who lives in any country where Canadians can legally ship you know, stuff too. There's just, you know, a very small handful of countries in the world where I'm not allowed to ship something, you know, like North Korea, you know, I can't ship anything there. But uh, if you're in a place where I can ship something, I will send that to you. Let's get onto this knife. What do we got? Well, CGRB is the one who makes this knife and I really like the small badging on this. It's, uh, you know, pretty bright right there, but it's a nice CGRB logo on that side. And on this side here, it says model J1923. 
And underneath there, it says it uses AR RPM 9. It's a stainless steel made by Artisan Cutlery, or specifically for Artisan Cutlery slash CGRB, and it's a good stainless steel. It's better than most budget stainless steels by a pretty good margin. What kind of blade shape do we have here? Well, most are calling this a cleaver. Yeah, it's sort of like a folding cleaver kind of style, which tend to have a, a there's a range of styles with this, but it's pretty much like that. Since it's a really deep, uh, full flat grind, technically it's not a full flat grind because there's a tiny bit of an edge up here that is still the standard flatness from the steel, but I'm calling it, it's effectively a full flat grind, just over an inch and a half this way. So that's a nice deep grind. It's not terribly thin behind the edge, but it's okay. And uh, it's not sharpened terribly well, but you can sharpen it yourself. Uh, it's okay, we'll talk about all that stuff. I like that they did this little feature right here. Just took a little chip out here, you know, or a clip, and then you got sort of another clip point here. Because if they would have kept that coming up, you know, it would come up to quite a, quite a high point here. And then when the knife is closed, it would make it quite a bit wider than you really would want it to be. So, and it's a nice little artistic touch, bit of a swedge here. And then we've got the plunge here with a forward choil, and it's big enough to actually use, at least if you've got hands my size and fingers, you know, roughly the thickness of mine, my hands are just barely extra large, and that forward choil is big enough to safely use, so I quite like that. Oh, one other badging, it says China right there. I forgot to mention that before. That's pretty much the blade shape. How well does this blade cut? Well, for cutting and slicing, it's okay. It's totally acceptable. There's no big flaws. Uh, there's no big cons. Certainly not a piercing style knife, but for cutting and slicing, it's quite good. I wish it was a little thinner right at that edge, but it's sort of at that uh, maximum thickness that I prefer on a brand new knife. Thankfully, it's got a really deep blade and it's not gonna get thick super quick as you sharpen this thing back over the years. It's got a PVD coating on here, a black PVD coating. It hasn't scratched up in my testing yet. And yes, I do carry and test these knives quite a bit and it's held up quite well. So there's that. The handle now, we've got this two-tone handle. We've got aluminum pivot collar, dyed in red. We've got an aluminum backspacer here. Everything else here is G10. We've got this black G10 and this red G10. The seam between here is not perfect. It's not a super tight seam. And then down here, we've got sort of a starburst kind of milling done into it. That's really, really cool. I'm very happy with that. It does give extra texture and, you know, it draws it in. It's fairly comfortable in hand. I wish they rounded it over just a little bit more, broke that edge you know, around a bit more. Like up here, you've got this chamfer along the spine and the back here. And then here you don't have any chamfer. It's as if they think this main chamfer with this starburst pattern is enough, but it's not really. This, If it gets hot in hand, you know, during prolonged use, it's right here that it becomes, you know, just a minor bother, nothing significant, but I just wish they would have chamfered that off. We've got liners with some skeletonizing. I'll take it apart and show you that later on. Uh, we've got T8 pivot screw, T6 other screws. I've got some brand new screwdrivers. And uh, these are going to be in the prize too. This is a T6 by Wera. And I've also got a T8 by Wera. The T8 here, pretty snug fit. Not a lot of play in there. Uh, these T6s back here. Pretty good, not a lot of play in there. These Wera screwdrivers are very nice. I buy them from KC Tool Company that's in the United States. They have a lot of you know, German and other European tools. Uh, Wera, most of Wera products are made in, here it is, made in Czech Republic. And they're really good quality. And these are some of my favorite, you know, they've got it's not just your standard steel all the way down to the end. They've got treated ends on these and they're just very, very nice. Some of the best screwdrivers I've ever used are these Wero ones, like these specific ones. I'm very happy with those. Anyhow, back to this. Uh, we've got right or left pocket clip holes right here without being milled in. So it's nice and flush, so it doesn't look too bad. 
huge, you know, delta-shaped or diamond-shaped hole here for your lanyard. You can put a very big cord in there. And they chamfered the edges around there and everything just a little bit, so your cordage is not going to fray on those edges. Quite nice. And there's the backspacer. It sticks out a little bit. It's got those big uh, jimping on it. I don't see any chipping on that anodization, at least not yet. That's a good thing. The pivot here, like I said, it's got flush on this side, not flush, but it doesn't have a screw head on this end, but it's not just flat. It's got a little bit of a divot in there. It actually looks like it's a button. And you've got a liner lock. And it's hard to see on black, and it's really hard to take good detailed pictures of black liners with a black lockup. But the lockup is almost exactly what I like to see on a brand new knife. And yes, it is a bit dirty in there. That's some of my skin, you know, like I said, I carry it. It's gotten dirty in there. But what I really like here is the lock release cutaway and the liner there. There's a chamfer on the side of it and it's really easy to get in there and you can always be sure that you're pulling that liner away. It's not uncomfortable. Like It's got a good amount of access to the lock release. Oh, by the way, lock up solid. No side to side play, no back and forth play. It's it's really good. Alignment when you close it, and I'll try to take a picture of it this way here so you can see it's pretty much right down the middle. It's pretty close to perfect. So I'm happy with that. The detent on this thing is very good. Let's see. Pulls it in. And being a bigger blade, this blade is a little bit weighty, but they've got it dialed in so that when you use the flipper, it works just fine. And when you use that hole, you know, do the old uh, spidey flick or whatever you want to call it from underneath. Works just fine. So good detent, good action. Two ways to deploy the blade. And this also deals with a little weight reduction. Uh, let's see what the balance point is like on this guy. If I can get it right. Uh... Come on, Jake, you can get the balance point. There it is. Not bad. I prefer it to be fairly close to the pivot pin. A lot of knives, it's back here. You know, that's not a huge distance, but uh, I'm glad for the balance point on this one. I do wish it was a little closer to the pivot point, but it's not bad at all. The grip on this thing, even reverse grips, you know, on a cleaver, yeah, even a reverse grip's comfortable, you know, due to that angle cut there. Reverse pull grip is even not uncomfortable, so that's good. And every other grip that you want is quite good. I do wish this jimping came out up to this clip right here, so that when you're doing that sneak up work like this, most of where my thumb is, there's no jimping there, and I'd like that jimping to go all the way up. But the jimping's done fairly well. Lastly, the pocket clip, it comes up, and it's you know rounded over there. It's not hot in the hand when I'm using it, you know, I prefer them to flatten out at the top, but this isn't bad. We've got T8, T6 screws back here. I didn't check those to see what the play is like on those. Let's see, I don't really like T6 screws. And these have a lot more play. A lot more back and forth, loose wiggle. And they're flush, and they're not very deep. So the T6 screws are the most at risk for getting stripped out of all the screws that are on here doesn't come exactly right to the end, but the pocket clip comes pretty close to the end. And uh, let's see how it looks going into a pocket. It does climb over all the way in, and it's got pretty smooth action. The texture on here is pretty fine, so it's pretty slick. The pocket clip, it's uh, apparently stainless steel, but it's not a super strong spring. It just slides in. It doesn't have a lot of resistance. It, you don't take a lot of pressure to pull it out. What I mean is it's not holding really tight right there. I wish it held a little bit tighter, but it's not bad. So that's the overview part of the summary. Let's take the thing apart and I'll show you exactly how it's constructed. First, this comes off with the pocket clip screws and that one body screw right there. That's a nice body screw in terms of its size and dimensions, other than the fact it's got a tiny T6. So clearly, you know, the G10 you know, they're not glued together at all. It's totally separate. I found this kind of weird. I took the uh, G10, the black G10 slab off. There's a little metal washer underneath the aluminum pivot collar. Decent screw. And then that's off. And what we've got is two more screws here. Now these screws, they are not good standard Torx screws. You can see they're very pointy like stars where true Torx sort of a star shaped, but the edges, the points are rounded. They're not super pointed. And the super pointed type of screws, in my experience, 
tend to be pretty cheap and they tend to strip out easily. Uh, those happen to be, well, the T6, look how sloppy the T6 is in those. That's, uh, that's very sloppy. Like there's, let me line this up here. There's a lot of play in those screws. So I'm gonna go take out my set and see if a T7 fits in there better. These screws here are quite terrible. They're quite soft and a T7 fits best. Still a little bit loose in there, but that's your best choice is a T7. Uh, we've got ceramic ball bearings in here. There's 10 ball bearings. Big stop pin, that's nice. There's your skeletonizing on this side. And as you can see here, there's skeletonizing on this liner as well, which helps quite a bit because it is a fairly big backspacer. Now that I've taken it completely apart, the aluminum backspacer, you don't have to have it. These spacers back here, they've got a shoulder on them, which means when you put the liners together, you could screw it together like that, and then you would just have backspacers. I like to include that information because some people, like I said, just don't like backspacers. So yeah, the backspacers are optional on this knife. It's not very heavy at all. It's not like it's adding much weight. So that's how it's constructed. Now I get to put it all back together again. We'll start with the weight of this knife. It's a little bit heavy. It is 145 grams, which is 5.11 ounces. So they did an okay job with it. Like you saw the skeletonizing earlier. The sharpness from the factory, I got a score of 195 best, which is just a little bit worse than average, so not terrible. The cutting edge length between my thumbs, 79.1 millimeters, 3.11 inches. Blade length, so tip to the closest spot on the handle, which happens to be up there. That is 89.2 millimeters, 3.51 inches. The thickness of this blade stock, 3.12 millimeters, 0.123 of an inch. The blade depth is widest right there, 38.5 millimeters, 1.52 inches, as I mentioned before. The thickness behind the edge, so on this black blade, it's very easy to see. That's where that silver line meets the main bevel, the thickness of the steel right there. It's variable along the edge, but not terribly variable. The average is 0.52 millimeters or 20 thousandths even. So 20 thousandths is the maximum thickness I want it to be from the factory. So it does fit in the specs that I'm looking for, but just barely. The grind angles, this side's got an average grind angle here of 18.1 degrees. This side's got an average of 17.5 degrees. Uh, this side started here at 18.4 degrees, ended at 16.6 .6 degrees. This side started here at 20 degrees and ended at 16.2 degrees. That's 3.8 degrees of change along this uh, 3.11 inches. This side's just under two of variability. Now for the handle, the handle length, 122.5 millimeters, 4.82 inches. The grip area in here, and for the grip area, I'm measuring from here to about here. I'm not counting this part because, you know, it's a little bit slick. Yeah, so this area, about nine centimeters, about three and a half inches. So pretty typical for, you know, a full-size knife. It's okay. The thickness of the handle scales on the G10, not on the screws, they stick out a little bit more. 13.9 millimeters, 0.547 of an inch. The handle depth, the widest point within the grip is back here. 30.2 millimeters, 1.19 inches. When the knife is closed, the widest point is right there. 45.7 millimeters, 1.8 inches. And the total length of this knife, and I haven't done this in a long time, 212 millimeters. What I haven't done in a long time is I didn't convert it to inches. That's on the screen exactly how many inches this is. What are my final thoughts on this knife? Do I like this knife? Yeah, it's okay. I really wish that it wasn't a PVD coating or, you know, the PVD coating itself isn't bad. I wish it was like stonewashed afterwards. Uh, you can see there's that one spot there that has wear. I'm just not that fond of PVD. I think this thing would look great with just a regular stone wash as well. The comfort of it, well, it's, like I said, this edge here is a little bit uncomfortable, but that is so easy to fix at home. 
just a little bit of sandpaper and very lightly round over, you know, those edges just here on the inside part of the handle. That would help it quite a bit. The pocket clip is not annoying there. I really dislike coated screws. Now I've just taken this thing apart and put it back together and of course the coating has come off on that screw already. I tried very hard to be careful. Uh, I don't like these T6 screws back here because they are not really T6. They're about T6 and a half. I really dislike that they're those weird, super cheap T7 screws inside. That's annoying. I don't like it when companies hide cheap stuff inside their knives. But, you know, like I said, action's good, lockup's good, detent's good, alignment's good, lock release is good. The action to, you know, deploy the blade is good. Flipper works just fine. There's a lot of decent stuff about this knife. If you really like this style and you don't mind what I've said about it, sure, go ahead, get yourself one. Thank you so much to my supporters. Especially a huge thank you to my subscribers. If you're not a subscriber yet, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you leave a comment because it might be this video that has the winner chosen from it. Might not be. We'll see. And remember friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. <laughs>